There will never ever be another melee player like Hungrybox. It ain't easy being number one. I've seen a bunch of people say they like it. A bunch of people say they don't like it. I actually have no clue what to expect. I am here. We're watching it together. I will talk. Okay, let's watch. Goodbye. It's April 21st, 2019. Competitors and spectators have gathered in Laurel, Maryland for the Pound 2019 tournament. Hungrybox has only one competitor left to face. Mango, the player who sent him down there in the first place. I don't remember shit about this tournament, man. Call me crazy. I didn't even remember that Mango is in grand finals. I just remember Hbox got hit by a crab. There it is, and Hungry Box. Hbox is your pound 2019. All right, Drake and chat for Hbox. Melee champion. After an incredible congratulations, victory, Hungry Box begins to celebrate in front of the stunned crowd. But unfortunately for him, the celebration he earned is about to be cut very, very short. Hungry Box what is, is the that? champion what is that? <laughs> once again. What is that? What is he holding? I'm not sure what that is in his hand. Hey! Hey! <laughs> oh, not the audio. Who threw this at me? <laughs> you saying someone threw that at him? Someone Just because Whoa. Hungry Box won? Just Fuck, I didn't know there was audio. Victory, a disgruntled spectator throws a raw crab at Hungry Box. Dude, the crab's so fucked. In a matter of seconds, Hungry Box is transformed from the most joyful person in the arena to the most miserable. Most I don't know if it was a, a real crab or a fake one or whatever, but it's actually so crazy. Because in hindsight, it's really funny. Just like, yeah, someone threw a crab at HBox. But in the moment, it's it's actually just so insanely fucked. Competitive gaming, it was food at the venue. That's do. insane. And Is that the guy? Raw crab at the win All right, chat. Take a, take a screen cap. We'll find this guy. But on this day we'll in find him. Maryland, someone did. Who is Hungrybox? You know how hard I work on here? I've never watched the doc. Why are you guys so sad about it? Like, even if it's biased, it can't be like that insane, can it? I'll see. Fine, I guess I'll see. It has to at least be a little bit good. Okay, not even a little bit. It has to be at least really good casually. Because a lot of people have watched this. Like I said... I talk. I was talking to this girl off of Hinge, and I told her what I did, and she's like, "Oh, I watched a, you know, H box. Like, I watched a documentary on Hungry Box." I'm like, "How? What the fuck? This is really strange." But their that you know who H box is. Such uncharted territory. Like people. However, much to his surprise, a lot Nintendo of people have watched this. The most ambitious crossover event in history, and Super Smash Bros. was born from the defiance of expectations. Super Smash! Because something's successful. Yeah, but it has to at least be good in a sense oh my god dude novelty of Moshi's getting his ass kicked pummeling beloved childhood oh my god no dude yoshi's getting fucked <laughs> what the hell what did he do to deserve that i mean this already it's like it's like feeding it down our throats like the the history of like smash but i think that's a good thing like already it's like it's doing a good job of appealing to people who don't know shit we i feel like you would assume making this video that everyone watching un knows this but for the few people who don't know it it helps a lot and especially if like i don't know As always especially because i'm assuming this person makes videos that aren't melee -y. i heard like I, when i searched it, it said nascar so i'm assuming they're making like sports time. videos or something Going before i don't know to its maybe i'm wrong after that, I could be completely off base, but like, Sakurai was tasked with I developing I think that's, its that's sequel good. in time for the debut of Nintendo's new console, the GameCube. Yeah, so if he makes NASCAR stuff, then like some of those people who watch the NASCAR stuff are probably gonna just click on this and see. So him explaining everything's really, really, really good, and I'm sure it got some people very interested, and some people honestly into like watching too, and watching Melee or watching Smash or whatever. I think it's good. The development cycle. The result <sighs> was an accidental masterpiece. Compared to its predecessor, Melee was much faster. Faster movement, faster attacks, faster combos. The rapid pace of the game contributed oh, to shit. incredibly dynamic and unpredictable Oh, dude, Force Dog! Melee offers the player an immense degree of control over their character. I, I watched this combo live. I still think this is one of the most insane combos that ever happened in tournament. Mechanically speaking, <laughs> I remember watching shit live and I, I jumped out of my chair. In the series. Shortly after the game's release, local Melee tournaments began to spring up everywhere, and thousands of players began contending for the title of the best Melee player in the world. Starting in 2004, Major League Gaming would sponsor Melee on its <laughs> I love the Doritos and Mountain Dew there. Incentivizing the highest level of competition with thousands of dollars. Dude, this is actually still so crazy. Because 
even today, this is a pretty insane amount to like win at most. Like not like we've had some really insane prize pools. Like Mango winning fifty thousand dollars for Summit is fucked, but that's still a lot of money for melee nowadays. Like just winning a tournament, getting ten grand—that's crazy. In prize money, Hungry Box started entering local melee tournaments in the summer of two thousand seven. In just a few months, he started regularly placing in the top five. And by nice. the next year, he started winning. As HBox kept playing, he found himself <laughs> conquering tougher and tougher competition. In 2009, he entered Revival of Melee. I think a lot of people got into uh, Melee because of this video. Because again, I, 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 a lot of people, even today in my chat, have said they don't really like the video that much. But this video had a big reach. And I feel like people underestimate how many people actually joined the scene because of this. This video was huge. Melee, the game's first major tournament since the release of Brawl. It's the, like, this is probably the most viewed Melee video of all time, right? Okay, no, Wombo Combo has 19 million. I'm in love with Okay, I was wrong. I'll hold that L, chat. I'll hold that L. Just watch this for the, the boys. Just two years after he started competing, Hungrybox was already contending for the title of Best in the World. But in addition to his individual success, Hbox was arguably taking part in something much more important. The rise of Hungrybox was no, video was huge. a new this video generation massive. of Melee. By 2010, the old legends of yesteryear had pretty much vanished. Yep. Like most of the old community, they had moved on to new frontiers. <laughs> The departure of Melee's old generation left new top players the opportunity to usher in a new era. How young are they here? Also, Mango got caught at the worst time possible. I feel like this looks like a pretty normal picture, and then Mango... <laughs> this is just such a funny face for it to be caught on. In January 2010, the Pound 4 tournament would mark the beginning of a period in Melee's history known as the Era of the Five Gods specifically serving as the first tournament with all five gods in attendance. The story of Melee's gods begins with the first god, Mewtwo yep. King. M2K, Beginning baby. in 2005, Mewtwo King would eventually rise and defeat Melee's old legends. And for many years, no player knew more about the game than Mewtwo King. I like, honestly, Mewtwo King looks pretty in good with the Burger King crowd. Mewtwo King was widely regarded <laughs> as he should bring that player back. in both Melee and Brawl. The second of Melee's gods to rise to power would be Mango, who, by 2009, would overtake Mewtwo King as the top Melee player. Throughout the history of Melee, many would argue that oh, no this player clip. had a more intuitive understanding of the game than Mango. I Together, love watching old Melee, because what is this? That was as what is he doing? It was <laughs> and how did it work out? What is he doing here? And then how does he end up getting this? Because nowadays, like, this guy... Fluid. Get up attack and then just rolls at Mango. Why? As it was unstoppable. I feel like that would not happen. At now. times, the only thing that could stop him Old was Mele's how much so he was funny. willing to try. Mango's exciting and aggressive playstyle made him a consummate fan favorite, especially through his iconic clashes with Melee's third god, Armada. Historically, Melee's competitive scene has viewed Europe as a significantly weaker region than North America. I forgot about the penguin stuff. A stigma stuff. that was often used by America. What was the penguin stuff again? What happened? Why are the Europeans seen as penguins? <laughs> Level was mad about seeding or something. The TL then said that being best in Europe is like being the best penguin in Antarctica. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. Man, what a fucked up thing to say. So what exactly did these five players do to transcend us lowly mortals? It's... <laughs> Okay, I feel like PP and Mewtwo King got the short end of the stick in these pictures. They just have their mouths open. <laughs> it's unknown who exactly introduced the term Five Gods to describe Melee's top players, but the expression started seeing frequent use in the summer of 2014. They're just, Most they're not, the thing is, is, just for stuff like that, it's funny to use, like, candid photos. I think. Because it's just like, I don't know. He used had to describe open. the era of Supreme The Armada one was like an obvious photo shoot where he's like looking serious and shit. Preceded it. From 2009 to 2015. Didn't Scar make the five gods? I wouldn't be, five I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked though. Scar was really, really good at that stuff. 
and like setting up the uh, like good narratives. Five gods would win every major tournament, utterly dismantling the rest of the competition in the process. In any competitive video game, your character is far more important than just a colorful avatar. It's an extension of the self, and an integral part of a player's identity. In Melee, perhaps no player is more intertwined with a character than Hungrybox and his Jigglypuff. I actually think Puff isn't a good character, but she has two things that are good. She has rest and the fact that she can, like, back air and, like, retreat really far. I don't think she's a good character. Minus those two things. That very low those two percent. things are, like, really fucking Missing good. Move but she has, like, a cut, like, treat Puff she's like not a, a good character. Rest Minus her few tools that are like insanely good. She has like a couple tools that are so attacks. good that make her good. It forces other players to back down and keep their distance, as one slip up could lead to devastating consequences. Throughout the 2000s, players would begin to discover the power of Puff, and the character the would gradually move this? up Melee's what am tier I looking list, at? peaking at number three overall in 2010. After Hungrybox like and Mango showed that Puff art. could dominate at the highest level. However, on the cusp of what looked to be a Jigglypuff uprising, the character was about to run into a major roadblock. Some of you may see this as ironic since Mango himself abandoned his original character for Fox, but it starts to make more sense when you consider the scale of sickness. The Melee community loves to throw around this idea of players and characters being sick. A sick character roughly translates to a character being cool, dynamic, yeah. and generally no, you're fun right, to watch Emblemen. and play. Fox Arguably is the more important character. than Melee's tier list is I know. its sick list, which I by know. my estimate looks something like this. You see, Hack switching from Falcon to Fox may have improved his standing on the tier list, but he kicked himself down a peg on the sick list, and the move was somewhat unpopular. On the other hand, when Mango switched from Puff to Fox, he upgraded his sickness by a huge margin. Be this has I'm changed quite a bit, I think. Yo, Mitchell, thank you for the prime. This has changed. I mean, I think people just like different players now. Like, people still have, like, the perception of, like, characters, but, like, Sheik is a lot cooler uh, than she used to be. I think this is still pretty true. Um, I guess it's still kind of true. It's not that different. But I don't think Falcon's at the top anymore. I think at the top is Falco. I think... If you put Falcon back here, Fal Falco would be at the tr at the top. Falcon's not at the top. A lot of people because think in Falcon's lame as shit now. No character is lamer than Jigglypuff. Right, because he's a peach. Boo! <laughs> Look at Hugo. Hugo's so bored. Was that Boo! the commentator? The commentator's booing. Boo! That's. <laughs> Whether it was out of loyalty I don't or know necessity, if Puff is the most. I think Puff is. Up. I don't know if Puff is the most hated anymore because Hbox's fan base is super, super big. I don't know who the most hated character would be at the moment, actually. It might be Peach. Fox is very hated among people who don't play Fox. I'm not even everyone who doesn't play Fox, but a lot of people who don't play Fox, but there's so many people who play Fox that Fox isn't the most hated. It might be Peach. There's no way it's actually Fox. Year after year, game after game, rain or shine with the same tried and true character. Most Melee players consider Jigglypuff to have a solid matchup spread, having winning or even matchups with most of the other high tier characters. But without a doubt, Jigglypuff's most difficult matchup comes against Fox, whose powerful vertical attacks are- I also think a lot of people hate Marth. I think people hate Marth more than they hate Fox. I think Marth is more hated Fox than Fox. Puff is quite possibly Melee's most intriguing matchup, pitting the strongest offensive character- Because Marth gets hate from both the Spacies, where both the Spacies, I think, don't hate Fox the most. I think both the Spacey players hate Marth, and so do, like, I, I think Puff mains probably don't like Marth. I think, like, Peach don't like Marth. I think it might be Marth. It, 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 I think it actually, it did probably used to be Wobbling Ices, but now people like Ices a lot, because Wobbling's banned. And, like, when Slug does some sick shit, people are, like, losing their mind. Okay, I think Fox among casuals, and then some people. I just don't think... Like, among, like, the actual Melee player base, I, I can't see it being fucked. Despite its also, small underground following, the Melee want, community just watch held the video. steady, persisting through sparse oh my events God. and prize money. Okay, let's watch the video. Damn, Mango took his shirt the off. Of the game itself. Their patience would pay off when, unbeknownst to anyone at the time, Melee would once again be thrust into the spotlight. 2013 was arguably the most influential year in Melee's history, a year that was marked by three monumental events. 
2013 oversaw the release of Project M, one of the most ambitious uh -oh. video game mods of all time, which sought to reimagine what Brawl could have been had it retained Melee's fast-paced mechanics. <sighs> Dude, Project M was so ever, fun as Melee a, players a casual could enjoy too. what they felt was a true sequel to Melee. Also, I always say it. Okay, Brawl was the most fun actual Smash game as a casual. P PM is the, the right answer as the best uh, Smash casual game, though. In 2013, independent filmmaker Travis Bochamp there's so many like easy combos and shit you could do. So you feel cool acclaim. even though you were shit. Like I would hit like like six piece combos and feel like I'm hot shit even though I was garbage. And I was like, damn, this is this is fun. Some the good film stuff. Would bring unprecedented exposure to melee's underground scene and would go on to inspire a new generation of players to compete in the coming years. But without a doubt, 2013 saw perhaps the most important event in the history of competitive melee where after six long years of slumber, Super Smash Bros. Melee would return to EVO. The announcement quickly Evo drew in weekend, over 700 Chad. competitors, making EVO 2013 the biggest Melee tournament to date. And heading into the event, all eyes shifted towards the five gods of the game. To everyone's surprise, Hungrybox found himself in winner's finals of Melee's most important tournament to date. Even more shocking was his opponent, Wobbles, Moki lost an to ice Rishi? Why would he point that out, Twilight man? of his career who managed to slay two gods on his way to one of the most improbable runs in Melee history. That's it! Wobbles is in grand finals! Astoundingly, Best Wobbles of three. did the unthinkable by conquering a third god in a row. To make matters worse for H-Box, the moment he lost, he didn't even know that he had. Wait, wait, do they know it's two out of three? Look at, look at H-Box's drip. The CT shirt, the khakis, and this this button up underneath. This is just, I guess, old, old I think drip. I it's three out of five. I guess. I don't know if they know. I don't know. I think it's super, they, no, it's super, know? like, twist. Yeah, <laughs> just I old think they think it's three out of five because that's the standard. H-Box dress is pretty and decent, there's though. there's a handshake, Hungrybox. Oh, Hungrybox is not happy about this. There's a handshake. That's crazy. And Wobbles. After this discouraging moment, Hungrybox had to imagine that his golden opportunity to claim the Evo crown had suck. slipped right through his fingers. The rest, as they say, is history. We may never know just how influential Mango's Evo You know what I've never noticed about that picture? This picture? Is Wobble be Wobbles being emo as shit in the background? Because this is such an iconic photo. I never knew he was there. <laughs> Mango yeah. hosted a now infamous Reddit and AMA be more on which Hungrybox too. voiced some scathing remarks about how Mango had disrespected him for his entire career. Mango's response? Come up and get me. I'm the boss. Roll, roll, roll. That's right. You want to know what's crazy about this? Is the negative a thousand points for on a comment. Paragon was the, yeah, this was the Armada Fox tournament, where he just started playing Fox against everybody. Oh, this Grand Finals was awful. I remember this. And Mewtwo King gives off game one. You know, I really feel like Huggybox's tag is applicable. Bruh. <laughs> So wait, this was oh, his yeah, like, first major win in a long here. time. Wow! And look at look at this. The king is so upset. <laughs> oh, he's way up there, and he and takes it that easy. Is it beautiful job, Hungry Box beats Music King yet again. Hungry Box opened 2015 with a bang by winning Paragon Orlando in dominant fashion at long last. Okay, I'll say right now, so far into this video, I don't see why people don't like it. I feel like this has been fine. And I'm I know we're not even half we're not even halfway through yet. We're almost we're getting there. But so far it really Stage hasn't been Fox that bad. Won a tournament with multiple other gods in attendance. After the character change, Hbox would fall to Armada 7 out of the next 8 sets they played. But despite this new setback, Hungrybox was rising. His tournament results were gradually improving, but more importantly, he learned how to adapt to the spotlight. 2015 featured the debut of Heel Hungrybox, where he learned to embrace his role as Melee's villain. ...is uh, what determines the right. winner or loser. I don't know if you can hear this in my headset, but like, listen to the crowd. Yo, the crowd is not happy. <laughs> Dude, when, when it totally was always stuck. Armada versus HBox Grands, it was so grueling. I know a lot of people really didn't like it, but uh, 
When it stopped happening, it felt a bit off. If it weren't for a I kind of missed them Captain Crunch. a bit. But they were like 40 minute grands a lot of the time. Crunch was a Fox player from Hungrybox's hometown of Orlando. After a disappointing finish, at I think CEO it was just nice because it was like, it was something that would happen a lot. And the stableness is nice. Teen, their hometown tournament, Hbox and Crunch started talking about how to deal with Puff's most difficult matchup. Soon after, Crunch assumed the role of Hungrybox's full-time coach, and after losing to Armada at the Big House, Hbox and Crunch made it their mission to analyze Armada's playstyle and find a way to Is beat him. Is Hbox wearing a shirt under For that jacket? Made it their mission to Looks like he just put on the jacket. Hmm. Analyze Armada's playstyle and find a way to beat him. For weeks, Hungrybox dedicated himself to hmm. study and grind the matchup so that the next time they met in bracket, he would be prepared. I couldn't do that because the tournaments I always sweat like a motherfucker. That jacket would smell like ass if I did that. With his win against Armada, Hungrybox had proven I remember this. that he could I remember the interview. anyone and everyone that Melee had to offer. He had spent a whole year building himself up as Melee's unstoppable villain, but after perhaps the most monumental win of his career so far, the pompous, arrogant Hbox unexpectedly broke down in tears. D1, I've wanted this for so long. Mm -hmm. And you know, my, my dad just passed away, you know? It was my biological dad, and we... I know it's personal stuff, but he told me, you'll never be the best. You'll be good, but you'll never be the best. There's an interview segment somewhere on YouTube featuring four of the five gods. Hungrybox was supposed to be there too, but due to a scheduling conflict, he couldn't participate. The producers decided to replace Hungrybox with a cardboard cutout of Hungrybox. <laughs> An amusing prop, I but also about a disturbingly that. accurate metaphor of how many in the Smash community view him. It looks like you might know something about. I know nothing. You have no. Wait, I know nothing. Any of you guys have any experience hanging out with him? I'm actually not entirely sure what to say because I feel like I know Hungerbox more than I know Juan. After Summit 11, I went to Denny's with Hbox and I got the Slam Witch, and it was, I think, the worst thing that has ever been in my mouth. But I shared that experience with Juan. It's not exactly easy to make a lot of friends at school when most of your classmates don't even speak the same language as you. Things at home weren't much better for him either. Juan's domestic life was often thrown into turmoil by his father, who would mismanage his family's wealth and outright abandon them in pursuit of his own fruitless business What did Juan ventures. get? I don't remember Juan's what he got. Juan's complex relationship with his father and the world around him ultimately created the competitor you see today, for better or for worse. The conflict Juan faced growing up instilled in him a powerful work ethic and unparalleled mental fortitude that he used to excel in melee and in life. All those losses over the years suddenly become a lot more reasonable when you realize that Hbox was balancing melee with a full-time student workload and then a full-time job as an engineer. Here's the amazing thing about going through school and working your ass off. I feel like that Every was framed a bit weird. I have more evil wins than I did my homework. There's another video on YouTube that- But it is really- f No, it's fucking impressive as shit. I just don't like saying that that's why he lost. <laughs> like saying, this makes sense. He was losing because he was doing all this shit. It's like, dude, it's impressive he was doing Mango's it all, but like, high I don't school know. Stories. And then the moment that changed Melee forever. Oh my god, I know, I mean, I've watched it before, but it's still crazy. And then just, <laughs> I'll pause for the boys. Just for the boys. Look at his pizza shoes. Sometimes the only thing you need to win is believing that you can. For years, Hungrybox embodied the competitor okay. who was never quite good enough. He was always so close, yet so far. Evo 2016 changed all of that, and Hungrybox walked out of that building a completely different player. After accomplishing what he did, nothing could stop him from becoming the best in the world. From that moment on, Hungrybox would never be the same, and neither would Melee. Dude, this dog is not bad. 
this is really not a bad documentary. After conquering his greatest challenge yet, Hungrybox fell into a bit of a slump. After starting the year on fire, Wait, he did I'm not waiting. win another tournament after Evo. I'll eat my words. Rankings, once again, but this Armada. really isn't that Following bad. Following a disappointing loss at the big house, he would take a moment to pause and reevaluate his life. Perhaps guided by those discouraging words that haunted him for his entire career, he knew what he had to do. At the end of 2016, Hungrybox quit his job to play Melee full time. At first, his newfound commitment to the game didn't seem to change much. It didn't help that it coincided with possibly the most dominant stretch of Armada's career. But then, late in the year, Hungrybox started winning. And then he kept yep. on winning. If he could score a victory at the big house, Hbox could put himself in serious contention for the number one ranking. His rival Armada would fall to Oh, Pluck, I remember this of tournament. An incredible winner's bracket run. Hungrybox would stumble early. Uh, that was my chat. That was my first ever out of Canada tournament was that tournament. And I remember he's probably going to talk about it, but it was really sad. Plup won. And then Hbox beats Plup in grands. And as he's like demolishing Plup, everybody is uh, leaving the venue. And it was really fucked up, actually. Look back on. Then proceed to tear I, I, I just turned 18 and I went to the States. Grand Finals. As the crowd rallied around the underdog Plup to complete his fairy tale run, the glass slipper broke. That might. Oh, and yeah. Hungry Box! No, Plup looks and so sad. Hungry Box closes it out. There was no pop off after Hungry Box double Dude, eliminated Plup. Plup used to be to really salty. His first big house title. He just slowly turned his gaze I feel like he, towards he the isn't anymore, but he crowd. used to be super salty. A few stuff. people clapped. A couple cheered. Yeah. Most had already begun filing for the exits yeah. without saying a word. No, I remember yeah, this because I, mean, I, I stayed till the end and a lot of people just like by the last game you look around the, the seats were pretty empty, which is it's just fucked up. It's sad. In what way? Usually when I win an event, I'm like ecstatic and I, right. I jump off. But like, I think I feel like I left part of me on that stage today. You ever have everything you ever wanted? And then when you finally have it, you're like, now what? One year ago, after the very same tournament, Hungrybox decided that he was ready to become Melee's best player. He never stopped to consider whether Melee was ready for him. Be careful what you wish for, Juan. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Are you guys saying... What do you guys say no to? That you guys don't have everything you ever wanted? Wait, what's going on here? Oh my god, what the fuck? What is that? <laughs> he really put the headband on Thanos? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, let's, let's watch. Let's watch. Let's watch. <laughs> well, we're boned. What, what the fuck is happening? And so we enter the era of Hbox as the number one melee player, an era characterized by two remarkable shifts in melee. The first of which being the end of the five gods dominating the game. The untouchable status of the gods had been in decline ever since 2016, after PPMD was forced to take an indefinite leave of absence due to medical issues. The four remaining gods continued to hold the keys to the kingdom through 2017, but many were beginning to tell that the end was near. 2018 saw the year's two biggest events fall to new contenders, with Plup taking Genesis and Levin too. taking Evo. Midway through 2018, Armada seemed poised to retake the number one rank from Hungrybox, only to shock everyone by announcing his sudden retirement from Melee Singles competition. Although never explicitly mentioned, many have attributed his retirement to the constant stress he suffered no. from trying to keep pace with Hungry. No, he didn't sit right beside him. Oh no, we're gonna watch that again. Have attributed his retirement to the oh, constant Oh no, look at our modern whole body shake. Many have attributed his retirement to the oh. constant stress he suffered from trying to keep pace with Hungrybox. Oh. For me, I feel like if I can't have fun doing oh. it, then it's no no point in doing it. At around the same time, Mewtwo King started shifting his focus away from Melee in favor of streaming and writing his book. Did that in hurt to watch? Is Mewtwo King still working King on his book? Competed in four events and looks unlikely to return to full-time competition anytime soon. Mango, perhaps the most dominant player ever in his prime, 
failed to win a tournament in 2018, and while he can still crank out the occasional epic performance, his inconsistency has relegated him to a shadow of his former glory, oh. placing his god status in serious question. What? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Dude, that's fucked up. Oh my god. I mean, obviously, it was, when was it made? 2020? So it was before Mango was doing really, really good online and shit. That's still fucked. That's still crazy. These days, it seems like just that saying his god is status is in. Only god left who can still strike fear into the hearts of his opponents through his sheer dominance alone. Okay, no, I'm starting to see what you guys were saying. In his time, there were four others like him. Now, there's just one. What? The current state of Melee is represented partly by the decline of the gods, but mostly by something far more confounding. Hungrybox always wanted to become That's the best crazy. in the world. He struggled through years of frustration. Okay, I will say up until there, the video is really, 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 really good. And I think I have faith that it'll be fine after that was definitely just that was a that's a low blow. Gradually that was uncalled and for. eventually defeating the best players that Melee had to offer. But when he finally achieved his life's goal, he began to realize that the promise I have faith land didn't exactly stay come fine. as promised. Becoming number one in the world was the hardest thing Hungrybox had done in his entire life. He was about to find out that being number one was even harder. It's common for sports or games to generally dislike their most dominant competitors. But in he all said, these cases, you guys. most of the hatred never strays far from the confines of the competitive landscape. You hate Tom Brady when he destroys your favorite team in the playoffs, but if you saw him walking down the street, you'd probably want his autograph. In Melee, the hatred for Hungrybox has progressed far beyond a simple competitive rivalry. A large fraction of the Melee community seem to treat Hungrybox with utter contempt. A lot of this yeah. comes from the idea that, by simply being the number one player, Hungrybox is killing the game. Much of this rhetoric stems from players like Leffen, who has assumed the role of Hungrybox's arch-rival following Armada's retirement. Leffen is perhaps the biggest proponent of the Puff Doomsday Theory, a scenario I have unofficially labeled 20FF. Like, I think that all the H-Box hate was... Like, it was a lot at the time. Like, it, it, was, it was just... It was a lot. It blows my mind that despite all the hate that HBox was getting, he stuck around, just farmed people, and now he's popping off, and he's like probably the biggest, he's like the biggest Smash content creator. I think most people would have just said, all right, well, fuck this shit, and dipped. Because he was getting so much hate. It was like very extreme. No, by and large, audiences tune in to watch juggernauts. Michael Jordan was possibly the most dominant player in NBA history. As he led the Bulls to their sixth championship in eight seasons, the NBA set their all-time record for television viewership. The next season, after whose ratings are notoriously dependent on whether Tiger Woods is in contention. The trend even holds true in games you wouldn't expect. During James Holzhauer's 22-game Jeopardy winning streak, you think the same number of people tuned in a month afterwards when the show returned to its regular, unremarkable contestants? When people watch stuff, they want stakes. They want to follow a story. They want antagonists to root against. Dominant players are inherently interesting because they fulfill all of these things. But that still doesn't stop a vocal portion of the community from zealously believing that Hungrybox is single-handedly killing Melee. I'm basically trying to say Hungrybox deserves more credit, and people discredit Damn. him because he's been winning for so long. Hungrybox victories Damn, are treated like funerals, Sweetie. while his defeats are celebrated like God's gift to the game. The goal of the game for many has devolved into stopping H-Box. Even Armada at his peak faced a considerable amount of hate in Melee, despite being one of the most widely respected players of all time. Even though he also dominated with a pink, floaty, defensive character, not many people considered Armada to be a threat to the game itself. Nothing Armada faced ever came close to That's the amount of bitterness Armada. and vitriol that Hungrybox tolerates on a regular basis. His eternal reward for struggling and People clawing hated on Armada, but it wasn't the same. People didn't hate Armada. People were just bored of watching Armada win. So they weren't excited when he won, and they were excited when other people won. But I don't think people hated Armada. I think people, like, actually hated HBox. And were mean to HBox. I don't think people were super 
mean to Armada. I think people just weren't as excited for him. People were excited to watch him lose because it was just exciting because he always won. But people weren't like, Armada lost. You fucking suck. I'm going to throw a fucking crab at you, bitch. You're ruining the game. It's like, okay, no one, no one did that. <laughs> Most ostracized top player of any game ever played. <sighs> At least perennially hated teams like the Patriots can return to their home crowd and be cheered. It doesn't matter where Hungrybox goes today. Nobody cheers him. He can never be applauded for his achievements. Many in the Melee community say he deserves the hate. In addition to the prevailing belief that he's ruining the game, many are quick to express their sheer disgust for Hbox as a- Chat, this is dated. This is made in 2020. Now Hbox goes to tournaments and people like him a lot. Cause he has- he- over COVID he grew a, a big fan base. Because it's like, this was true for the time, it's not true anymore, but it was true for the time. Because it came out unwillingness to play friendlies or mentor other players, as he tends to guard his Jigglypuff gameplay as a trade secret. Others cite instances of his infidelity in past relationships as an indictment against his morals. <laughs> you actually gotta throw up a picture of Juan with Daisy and Peach on his arm. Oh my god. God. All right. All Marsh right. Just accused Hungry Box of being generally rude or egotistical based okay. on interactions from years ago. There's a saying in the melee community that everyone has an H Box story, me included. I mean, this one time I saw Hungry Box at a grocery store in Gainesville, but I won't get into that here. The point is that melee players can usually pull out a laundry list of reasons for why they detest H Box on a personal level. And for that reason, he gets scrutinized more than any other player in the game. Athletes like Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods each had their own share of personal demons, but their respective audiences were both able to look past that and appreciate their accomplishments as competitors. It seems that the Melee community has an all too difficult time applying the same treatment to Hungrybox. They like to assume that everything HBox does has some nefarious self-serving plan behind I'll be, it. It got bad enough to where Hungrybox I'll be honest. Even this is not as far of a reach as I think people are acting like it is. People were not excited at all. People were not like, man, I'm excited to watch HBox. He's so good. I don't, I think this was actually a, a pretty not so far. Maybe it gets worse. People really did not like watching HBox. It might go downhill, but I'm, uh, cause I'm seeing people saying like, damn, what's, what's he talking about? This is actually not really a stretch. It's changed now. I don't think this is much of a stretch. And look at his watch on stage without facing backlash and drama. It's as if melee people have such a low opinion of HBox that they couldn't give him the benefit of the doubt that he may have been running late for a flight and wanted to keep track of the time. It doesn't matter how much he reforms his actions and attitude today. Hungrybox has always been held to his lowest standard and he's never allowed to overcome his past reputation. Perhaps the community's apparent zero tolerance yeah, that, that happened, Chad. That actually happened. Like, what? I know, I know that it might change. This part is so outdated. I don't, like, it is, but I also, like, it's accurate for the time. You have to, like, look at it for the time. Because it was made in 2020. This happened. Like, he beat Pew Pew and people, I was there. And people were saying, fuck HBox. People were chanting it. So far, what he was saying actually is not much of a stretch. People did not like HBox, and people were like outright just like rude to him. At the end of the day, the Melee community stigmatizes HBox for the same reason they always have. He doesn't fit into their idea of what Melee should be. The mere existence of Hungrybox challenges the fundamental identity of the game itself. Melee prides itself on its fast-paced gameplay, yet its top player uses one of the slowest characters. Melee celebrates its highly skilled technical mechanics Yet its top player uses the character with the most simplistic controls. Melee relies on its risky and aggressive playstyles to wow its spectators. Yet its top player plays patiently and defensively. Hungrybox can never be truly respected because Hungrybox isn't Melee. But allow me to explain to you how he is. It's July 9th, 2013. After raising more than $90,000 for charity, the Melee community punched a ticket for their beloved franchise to return to EVO. After six long years of waiting, the biggest Melee tournament in history was less than a week away. This could be Melee's big break. I, I honestly don't think the, the stuff before was crazy. I think maybe there's like this part gets whatever. I don't think it was like crazy. Like there's bias in whatever, but 
I don't think that's a, a completely, at least like the portrayal of like how it was, like the scene was, that's pretty accurate portrayal. People did not like age bugs. Talent can People put like on really a good enough show. Melee may finally be recognized for the brilliant competitive masterpiece it is. With less than three days to go before the tournament, Nintendo blocked Evo from streaming Melee to the absolute shock of the Smash community. Eventually, after a sizable amount of backlash, Nintendo allowed the event to proceed as normal. But the message had been delivered loud and clear. Nintendo would never truly respect Smash as a competitive game. No matter how popular competitive Melee got, the community would always be on their own. It didn't really make much of no, a difference. No, I think I think that's been my, my, my biggest issue with the video was like, yeah, it was like the like the the mango stuff of saying how he's like washed and he's not a threat and he's like you know he, he his god stuff is in contention and whatever and even like the the way he's like talking about like left and shit i feel like the way he talks about other players is a bit strange but i don't think the the stuff about hbox is like wrong i think that's like my biggest gripe with it i don't think the, the hbox shit's like crazy there's there's like bias but it's not like hbox was super it's that's super how it hated always been. and at the time an it's outdated sure but when this was made it was it wasn't to play by wasn't wrong. huge tournament pots it's discouraging to realize that melee will never have that privilege it's sad to think that top melee players who are so talented and draw in so many viewers often have a hard time affording rent from tournament winnings alone melee fans love mango because mango represents how they see melee what many of them don't consider is that Hungrybox represents how the rest of the world sees Melee. Other Smash players often regard Melee players as rude and arrogant, and they actively root against Melee's success. Casual players are often hostile the to the idea that Smash <laughs> is even played competitively at all. Much of the Smash fandom can't even comprehend the reasoning behind turning off items in tournament play. When Melee was removed from the EVIL lineup in 2019, many people celebrated saying that Melee no longer deserved the spotlight. Lots of people in the general fighting game community believe that Melee never deserved the spotlight it got. Does all this sound familiar? Well, that's because Melee sees Hungrybox how the rest of Smash sees Melee. The fighting game community treats Smash how Melee treats Hungrybox. You may not want to believe it, but Hungrybox is Melee in the most literal sense. Both spent years being told they weren't good enough, that they would never achieve what they would eventually become, both were constantly disrespected, stigmatized, and ridiculed because they didn't quite fit into what others thought they should be. Both were able to succeed even though everyone else wanted them to fail. Both have a huge chip on their shoulder because no matter what they accomplish, how many challenges they overcome, and how much they prove themselves, they will never get the respect they deserve. In the countless, endless online arguments between the FGC and Smash, Melee fans will always defend their game I by like, saying just because it's different see what doesn't he said. mean it's easy. Every time just this a happens, weird analogy. Hungrybox just shakes his head and sighs. It's hard for everyone. It's a lot easier for Puff or for Falco or for Fox. It's just it's all hard to win tournaments. So just get better. Hungrybox is Melee. And you know what else? Hungrybox is the best in the world. And as much as some people would tell you otherwise, Melee has never been more interesting. 2019 saw Hungrybox win 12 of the 20 tournaments he entered. It also saw a Pikachu main and a Captain Falcon yep. main win majors <laughs> for the first time in the history of the oh, game. Man. In present day Melee, the gods are the old generation and Hungrybox is the last of the gods. That's dumb. Melee is no, approaching the precipice of an entirely new era and Hungrybox remains the last stickler of the old days. In a way, Hungrybox carries the torch of all the gods. That's dumb. Newer players will never know the satisfaction of challenging a prime Mango, Armada, or PPMD. Ugh. For them, facing Hungrybox is the next best thing. He represents one of the few remaining links between old and new Melee. And like, as much as some Melee The thing that like I think is crazy about that opinion of saying Hbox was the last god is that Mango was still there, and also, when HBox was, like, not winning tournaments and getting, like, fucked, people still called him a god. So I feel like that's just, like, super biased. There will come a day when Hungrybox stops playing Melee, and in his absence, the game will become that much less interesting as a result. And now, at long last, we return to the crab, <sighs> perhaps the most enduring symbol of Melee's relationship uh, with Hungrybox. 
Crab mentality refers to the unwillingness of a community to let its individuals succeed. It's based on the behavior of crabs in a bucket, who will often prevent their peers from escaping by pulling them back from the brink of freedom, thus dooming them all. If Melee is to survive in the future, they'll have to learn to tolerate their top player. By trying to destroy HBox, they're only destroying themselves. Because at the end of the day, Hungrybox is Juan de Biedma. Despite playing for the past decade with the status of God, he's only human. The point I think is, the analogies the are you overcame strange. <laughs> if you're going through it, focus on the fact that you are. Yeah, I, I see. I see what people are saying with the end of you're it not being through. as good because it's some of it's just like what the fuck. Anyone can ask of you. I don't think it's as bad will as people HBox make it out. Ever overcome the hate? Hopefully, one day Melee will learn to appreciate Hungrybox while they still can, because there will never ever be another player like him. <sighs> no, this video shit. <laughs> I think people hate on this video more than they should. I think that the worst things in it are Hbox is the only god. He's the last standing god. That's dumb. That's just not true. And I think some of the metaphors are like a bit of a stretch. Like Hbox being melee and like doing that stuff is like, okay, like I get what he's trying to say, but it's I don't think it was necessary because it just was kind of cheesy. And I don't like how he talked about other players because he just wrote other players off. But I don't think he was wrong in how they treated Hbox because people treated Hbox like complete shit. Because I know a lot of people really don't like this video, but like other than that, it's like fine. Overall, I don't think it was as bad as people were telling me. And I'll stand by that.